This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Back again at the end of June already. Already, and we've got so much going on. And I was talking about the events at Fort Wallace. And so we've been working on the, the addition to the museum at Fort Wallace. So we're getting been getting all the artifacts together. And Valerie Smith just did this incredible job designing this. And, of course, Jerry Thomas did the statue of Medicine Bill Comstock that's going to be unveiled on July 8th, all the stuff. And when you start looking through the larger-than-life characters that were there, it is, you know, Custer and Sherman and all these people are there. But Miles Keough, maybe the most handsome man that ever served there. He was just devastatingly handsome. And he was an Irishman, so he had a wee bit of a drinking problem there, Frankie, you know. And so he's, uh, um, or I don't know, is it just redundant to say an Irishman had a drinking problem? Is that even a surprise to anybody? But, and he never got married because he loved all the ladies. He loved all the ladies there, Frankie, so. Oh, my. Yeah, so he's just, he's one of my favorites. I'm just, I'm and, trying to get Melissa around to do a sculpture of him. I'm raising the money, folks. If you want to contribute to build a statue, a sculpture to uh, um, Miles Keough, whew, so, be still my heart. So I, 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 I assume that you're doing a story about it. Oh, him. yeah. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, every chance I get. <laughs> we know Miles Keough as the Irishman who died with Custer at the Little Bighorn in 1876, leaving his horse Comanche as the only cavalry survivor. Custer's Irish Knight, they called him. Keough was only 36 years old when he was killed in service during the Indian Wars, but he was a hardened veteran by then, having served first in the armies of the Papal States, defending the Pope during a rebellion in Italy. The Papal armies were defeated, and Keogh was imprisoned at Genoa. After his quick release by exchange, he went to Rome and served in the company of St. Patrick as a member of the Vatican Guard. The highly decorated soldier became bored with guard duty, however. When the Archbishop of New York came to Rome to recruit army officers, Keogh and two of his comrades joined the United States Army. He became a cavalry officer on the staff of General Buford, fighting at Brandy Station, the largest cavalry engagement of the war. Buford's nemesis was Confederate Cavalry Commander General J.E.B. Stewart. He was promoted to Captain, 7th Cavalry, on July 28, 1866, and assigned to Fort Riley, assigned to Company I, under the command of George Armstrong Custer. Keogh had sole responsibility for defending the Smoky Hill route against Indian raids from late 1866 to the summer of 1867 while commanding Fort Wallace, with unrest at every hand. A shortage of soldiers, supplies, and anything else that would make commanding a post possible, he performed admirably. He knew and or served with almost every single legendary name on the plains. Ironically, his former enemy, Stuart, had also seen service in Kansas, but before the war. While serving her, Keogh retraced many steps earlier trod by Stuart. The handsome officer had a fondness for drink, but also admitted to a weakness for the fair sex. He never married. Keogh is forever connected to Kansas through his legacy of service and his horse, preserved for posterity at KU. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground, and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I thought, I farm and ranch by myself. This is not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. And got down there at eight o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. <laughs> 